I am Elias Zverev, you know me. For the past several years, I've been interested in uh, points of interest, and I spoke at last State of the Map about that, and at Phos4G as well. Uh, and I will be doing this indefinitely. Uh, so uh, first, uh, let's define some terms. What are points of interest? Like, it can be anything, like trees are points and they are interesting. So also works, but uh, for this topic, we will focus on businesses. That's like a establishment with usually person inside, with open hours, with wheelchair accessibility, stuff like that. So let's keep it like narrow, relatively narrow. So points of interest in OpenStreetMap are notoriously hard to map. Like, uh, if you have tried, you know, uh, like there are so many tags, they're hard to collect. Uh, I have like a first-hand experience. Like, uh, t around 10 years ago, I went around my hometown uh, an entire day just making photos of shops and, I know, restaurants and stuff like that. I made, like, uh, surveyed like 300 venues and then I spent four days morning to evening just entering the data into JOSM. And it was so tiring, so exhausting, so like a uh, routine mundane task that I never again did that. Mapping points of interest is hard. Like if you see a shopping mall back then, you just turn around and walk the other way. Too hard. <laughs> Since then, I have written an app, Every Door, you all know that. Uh, it makes it easier because now you can spend like at most a minute uh, a venue and get it all into OpenStreetMap. And I have used it a lot. Uh, and uh, I mapped like several thousand points of interest in my city with it, like, uh, somewhere even like 100% coverage and stuff like that. So with the app, which is getting quite popular, it's the other way around. You see a mall, you go to it, because yeah, free data for OpenStreetMap. It becomes really fun. So uh, the app was published last year, and it had a lot of users, and I did thousands of edits. Other people did thousands, hundreds of thousands of edits. So, I'm here, to sh I'm here to share what I have learned. And what can I say for PUI mapping, volunteer PUI mapping in OpenStreetMap? Uh, I'm sorry, I was wrong. It didn't work out. Because like uh, people just don't take every door and go map thousands of PUIs with it. like. Turned out that I'm not representative of anybody of the same community of any like number of people because it's like my interest to go outside the map. Usual people, common people, they go outside, enter one shop, and go home. That's a day well spent. Last year at Phosphor, no, yeah, last year at Phosphor G, I gave a, gave a talk about. Every door that now everybody will go out, map hundreds of shops, open street map in 10 years ha will have 10 million more POIs, and finally we will win, we'll like uh, put all the commercial uh, data providers to rest. I'm sorry, I was wrong. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. So maybe like we can get help from businesses. Like, you know, make them add their own data to us. There, we have a way uh, that's, uh, and it's possible, like companies have been doing some imports uh, and the OSM community is pretty welcoming of them. They have processes and they like approve everything. And generally companies come to OpenStreetMap and we like uh, welcome them with open hands. Uh, take sarcasm, right? Because we all know it's not the case. When companies come to OpenStreetMap, we like go away. No, not not like that. Not not upfront. 
like, yeah, we say, we have a process. Follow it to the letter. Like first, your data needs to be perfect. Second, there shouldn't be any one person in the community that objects to it. And then you can uh, import your data into OpenStreetMap. Great success. I don't think in the past five years, I've seen a single large scale PUI import in OpenStreetMap. So this doesn't work. There are, yeah, kind of no imports to OpenStreetMap. Except there are, right? Most of us know that. Just we don't see them in the imports mailing list and stuff. But there are uh, SEO companies whose like entire business model is uh, companies pay them to put themselves on the map. And they upload their data to Google Maps, to here, TomTom, uh, Foursquare, and of course OpenStreetMap. They do POI imports, it just we don't usually see it. But it happens a lot. If you go to any shopping center and look at history, you will see some companies like Rocket Data. They do this a lot. They try to follow community guidelines, but we usually just stop paying attention. But they import a lot of data and like it's measures in like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands POI getting, uh, having their way onto our map. And that feels like a good thing. Like I am all for that. Like let them import millions of POI. Like go ahead. Except like um, as Frederick, said around 10 years ago and like there's this issue of privilege like to get on OpenStreetMap you have to pay an ECO company and that's like a weird kind of census. What if you own a small restaurant, small bakery and want to have yourself on OpenStreetMap? You don't need to pay. Maybe there should be some website where you go enter your company title and you get onto the map, right? Is there such a website? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on OSM, we have the website. It's really simple, yeah. Uh, company chooses their location, uh, chooses the category, title, enters some co contact details, uh, presses a button and they're on OpenStreetMap. Well, kind of, right? <laughs> you know what happens. They not, don't go to OpenStreetMap. They go into OSM nodes. That's a separate layer, and they wait for some stray mapper to notice the node and turn it into an object on OpenStreetMap. Uh, does it work? Uh, their wiki page says kind of. Like, uh, last year it was 80,000 OSM nodes created with uh, this website. Of them, 40,000 closed, I guess, converted to the map. So 40,000 business owners still waiting for their business to appear on OpenStreetMap after submitting all the data. I wouldn't call it success. So volunteer mapping doesn't work. Imports doesn't work. Don't work. On OSM, individual businesses also doesn't work. What have we left? Nothing. <laughs> uh, and at that point, it starts like makes you think. Like, uh, what if it is the other way around? So the common thought is we don't have tools good enough, so we don't have PI on the map. What if it's what if we don't want POI on the map and hence we don't have the tools? Hence we uh, try to prevent imports as, uh, uh, as early as possible. We don't uh, have like proposals for POI attributes as much as we have proposals for, I don't know, uh, roads, footways and stuff like that. We just are not interested, go away. Like uh, it's uh, in the title in OpenStreetMap, an open street map. 
So let's focus on that. Streets are really easy to support. Like POIs, they are hard to manage. They get obsolete really fast. They're hard to collect. It's not our job, right? We could, uh, I don't know, have, do like we do with elevation models, with complex 3D models, like make people use a layer on top of OpenStreetMap. Like why not uh, just uh, find some other source of POI data and just put it on top and it's not our job. We will continue like serving forest roads or something. Except, yeah, where will they take this from Google? Where do you get POI data that's open enough to put on top of OpenStreetMap? Uh, yeah, I, I heard somebody mumbling Overture. Yes, Overture might work, but then uh, like uh, people have looked at it and roughly half of the data is pretty good. So kind of like Google might work, but still like something wrong. I would want to update the data of a shop, our POI for OpenStreetMap. Like uh, we, we can like approach this reasonably. Like why do we even have OpenStreetMap? What is the purpose? Well, the first one is obvious, like to have open, <laughs> open data of the entire world. Right? But, but the second, basically it was made to, uh, to map for us to map, to have fun. So, and I saw people get like their dose of fun from mapping POI. I, it's pr pretty interesting to me. Ergo, it fits onto OpenStreetMap. <laughs> so yeah, let's get out of the way. It's uh, OpenStreetMap, I think, needs POI. Uh, just it needs all other kinds of geodata, except administrative borders. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, it might be a matter of tools, indeed. It just, we haven't paid much attention to that and maybe it's time to start. I don't know. So, what can we have? Let's start with volunteers. What are we missing? Like, I myself have, like, intrinsic motivation to collect POI. Like, it's fun to me to just go and collect them all, like Pokemon. Like I want to map 100% of shops. It's not enough for most people. I'm not most people. <laughs> I have learned that. What can we have? Well, first, leaderboards. To see that I'm better than somebody that doesn't map as much. And for leaderboards, you need statistics. The problem is, right now we know how many nodes, ways, and relations are in the world. If we're very lucky, we might know how many polygons, but nothing about points of interest. Absolutely no idea how many points of interest in the world or in a, like se separate countries. Like uh, at one of my jobs, I was tasked with like comparing POI datasets from proprietary data sources and from OpenStreetMap. And I just didn't have the numbers for OpenStreetMap. Of course, I had to wing it, like use Taginfo, like uh, add uh, shops to amenities, subtract uh, benches and parking spaces and kind of like that. But it's all very flaky. We need statistics. Right now, to get it, you need to parse planet file or Taginfo database. It should be fast. It should be, I went out with every door spend two hours and then it immediately says me, you have mapped 150 POIs. Great job. Come tomorrow for 200. And that needs coding. That needs like definition, what is POI? That needs counting, not only like the number, but also freshness uh, and uh, types of POI because there are businesses, there are trees, and all that kind of stuff, split by countries, by people. It's a, 
almost solved problem. It only needs developers. Are there any developers here? You know what to do. <laughs> so, uh, the other thing is bringing ed editing uh, POI to everybody. Because I know every door is not popular. It's never meant to be, because it's pretty complex, I think, for common people. Uh, just 1,000. Like, uh, Street Complete has 7,000 people editing every month. It's better. Like, uh, the idea is to make POI editing easier for everybody. Uh, and that means improving other editors as well. If you look at the stats, uh, of 11 most popular editors, eight are mobile. People are working, working with editors in hand. No part of every door is trademarked or copyrighted or like closed. You can take concepts. You can take open our editor. You can take like list instead of map. Make your editors easier. And finally, uh, just a moment. And finally, we can use Google Maps. Well, uh, when, when I lived in a densely populated area, uh, I could walk all of it and collect 100% of shops. Uh, there are all, all the benches, all of the entrances, the flat numbers are on the map. When I moved to outskirts of the city, you have to bicycle around to find something. I don't know where to go. So we could use Google Maps, Yandex Maps, Overture Maps to just find where we need to go to survey. Nobody would object to that. It's not copying data, it's just referencing and planning. So why not make a system that will find places we need to go next to map to use OpenStreetMap data. Uh, like we have like check date, survey date and OpenStreetMap. We can calculate freshness and find obsolete places like uh, Statistrat uh, near, the, uh, near the Bircham station. Like when we were planning a uh, mapping party for uh, Friday, uh, I looked at it, it's full of POI. I looked into it and it's like was all mapped in March, 2020. That is like in human years, that's like last century. Again, this all can be factored in and made into this field mapping, tasking system, I don't know, that would tell you where to go to have a perfect map. That's like, planning would be very nice. So that's for volunteer mapping. For uh, businesses, we are back to imports. Really, there's no way around this. To get million POI, like you cannot do this one by one. You need help. You need help for business, just like SMF needs help from overture maps. Uh, we need help mapping from companies doing imports. And again, we, we have burned a lot on this. We know why they are bad. But you, we also maybe under, should understand this concept about geo is that is, it is never good. There is always something wrong with any geo data set you can find or create on the web. There is not a single perfect data set. Like, uh, give me a, any single one and I find many issues. It's like accuracy, completeness, uh, attributes, anything can be wrong. And rigging, our import guidelines, our processes to just finding flaws and rejecting imports on that base doesn't work. Like opposite map is for making mistakes, really. <laughs> uh, we, we need to accept that. So uh, I will get past that. Community thing is not my strong suit, but I know of technology <laughs> like, uh, Six years ago, uh, or seven, I have made a tool that basically uh, takes your data, like all the business locations or uh, something, uh, and gets them into OpenStreetMap. I have imported 
like tens of thousands of uh, fuel stations, uh, tens of thousands of addresses, uh, bicycle parking spots, and uh, like museums, everything. It's it's uh, like a really complex thing. You write a profile and it downloads the data from OpenStreetMap, then it's like converts your data into like internal format, looks for change, it does conflation to uh, merge the data to put it onto OpenStreetMap. But then there's import guidelines. You need to have community approval. So there's a separate thing. Uh, yeah, that's profiles, so doesn't matter. Uh, there's a visualization thing. You just upload the changes and you can show them to everybody and they can make amendments. Like the tag doesn't work, should be not set. Uh, some comments, uh, location should be different. Community makes amendments and then the resulting JSON file feeds back into OSM conflator and gets uploaded. So this is like entire process to import things to OpenStreetMap, which is mostly automated, but with community input. Input. I don't think anybody have used it in the past two years at least, because I think this is the first time I mentioned this in English. But still, <laughs> we have the means. Like we just need to make it viable because it's still like development programming. So here, what I can like propose is kind of third system on top of that that automates all of this. So like uh, Google, Yandex, they have this page. You come with CSV of all your shops, upload it, and it automatically does all of this and imports to Google Maps. And then it comes back when the list changes and updates this. Basically the same thing. Like you provide it with your API endpoint, it ingests it, runs the whole conflation community validation process automatically, like notifies people on mailing lists, like has a veto button, I don't know anything, does it all automatically. For company, you upload your data, you have done your job. Might work, I don't know. <laughs> uh, probably won't, we have too many mappers in OpenStreetMap, but still. Uh, yeah, and for individual companies that don't have CSVs of uh, other locations, like, I don't know, the bakery nearby, I don't have a, have a CSV, they have a website. And you know machine learning? Interesting stuff. I'm pretty sure, like, it's almost magic. Maybe in a year or two, it, you could just feed a web page of a venue and it will extract location, the phone, the title, and just prepare the data into machine readable format to be imported to OpenStreetMap. You own a bakery, you submit web page, and it all happens automatically. You're on the map. No need to fill any forms. If you update address on your web page, it gets up updated in OpenStreetMap. Why not? It's not too far of a future. So, uh, I, don't, I don't say that it like, immediately will make OpenStreetMap, like everybody go to OpenStreetMap, right? <laughs> uh, it doesn't work like that. Like, we have new tools, come, come map your business. No, not, nothing like that would happen. But like uh, statistics plus automated tools plus our openness about all of this, it signifies our like seriousness about points of interest. Just like with roads, it's not the number of roads we have in the database that makes companies come to us for the data. It's our validation tools, it's our processes that people see that some people vandalize it, it gets reverted, so it's still usable. Seriousness about how the data is treated and ingested into OpenStreetMap is what drives businesses to use it and other businesses to contribute to it. So maybe like statistics and like uh, most of all being open to outside data will help us get more POI and 
that is how one day we finally put all these commercial PI providers out of business. Thank you. Thanks, Ilya. Um, I'm going to start with two comments from the live stream. The first one is Go, Ilya, go. Shout out from Letwin Pondo. <laughs> the second one came in from Yamer Firat. Not sure how to pronounce his name correctly. Um, recently, in a discussion on the Dutch subforum, the following site was mentioned osmmybiz.osm.ch. It actually changes map data, just tested it. It has the issue that it doesn't properly do after midnight opening hours. Not sure if this is a site you know. Yeah, that site, I think it was precursor to an SM or vice versa. It's Stefan Keller made it, made it. And it's interesting, but it's kind of old. It's really hard to use it. And that's, I wouldn't direct businesses to the website, <laughs> frankly. I, I would have something easier. I would like to just submit a web page, really. I think that's a neat idea. Okay. Any questions from the audience here? Thank you, Ilya, for the talk. Um, I always wondering why you don't see another open point in your list of points. The source of PO, good POIs, open to end users, we contribute are, it easily. Because we are already open to end users, mostly thanks to MapsMe and organic maps. Users use OpenStreetMap, not through just apps, but with, through Facebook, through Bing Maps, as you, we have seen the map. Using OpenStreetMap is a solved problem. Like We don't want any more usage of OpenStreetMap, we want more data. Like, come on, stop. <laughs> so you want more data or you don't want more data? I want more data. I don't think that like open, being open to users is a problem we need to solve because it's already solved. Okay, but then one, uh, why didn't you name it as uh, one of the possible solutions to solve the problem? You listed imports, you listed community events, but uh, you didn't list make it so easy for anyone on the planet to update the information, to highlight it, to, to make it easy for anyone, just for my parents, for your grandma, and that's it. The problem will be solved or not. What do you think about it? You are question. reiterating uh, the common, like, uh, seeing OpenStreetMap had tr translated at the beginning of its existence. Make it so everybody on the planet edits the map, can edit the map. And then make it easier. Make the ID editor. Make the editor to maps.me. Make it so everybody edits OpenStreetMap. Everybody doesn't edit OpenStreetMap. As uh, Mike from Overture said yesterday, you need a specific mindset to edit OpenStreetMap, which most of you here possess. Is that mindset that when you see a litter on the street, you pick it up and put it to trash. And you, if you like, Attentive on the street, you will see that people don't do that usually. People don't edit OpenStreetMap no matter how easy you make it. So I don't think that's a problem to solve. <laughs> Try organic maps. It's pretty easy for it. This will be the last question. Thank you, Ilya. Um, so when using POI data, usually people don't just want to see if there's a business and the open hour, open galleries and stuff. They want to see reviews. Like, is there a person that already went to that restaurant, hotel, whatever, shop, and how good an experience they had? So what do you think? Is it possible to integrate that thing into OSM? So what about reviews in for OpenStreetMap POI, right? Mm -hmm. I thought very long about where to insert like reviews into this talk. They just don't fit because reviews cannot be made into open like open project. We had uh, reviews for OpenStreetMap data in maps.me. 
And basically it required several moderators on a payroll to filter through that because there are so many like bad reviews, not bad in terms of like one star won't go again, but reviews like, uh, okay, or reviews like, uh, go to the shop, the top of the street is better. <laughs> like, or reviews with swear words. You need people on a payroll to filter through reviews. So the open project like OpenStreetMap like shouldn't have it inside because we are, we as OpenStreetMap, as OSMF are very bad at hiring people. So let some separate company, maybe organic mass when it gets bigger, like concern themselves with the problem. Like I have seen open place reviews project. It's dead. I have seen reviews in maps.me. They're dead. Like, let somebody else try. That's more trouble than it's worth. Okay. <laughs> of course I'm skeptical, but I'm also optimistic. You can be two things at once. So I guess that's all our time. Thank you all. And you can find me later. <laughs> <laughs>